Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. I believe this equation is homemade because I think I thought about this idea. I don't think I've seen it anywhere else. But anyways, it doesn't matter, right? No big deal. So we have x squared minus 9 to the power x equals x plus 3 to the power x. And we're going to be solving for x values. So let's get started. So how do we solve these kinds of problems? Guess and check. Well, it might take a while and you may not get all the solutions. I'm just checking something real quick. I think that's what I have. Okay, good. Now, so guess and check is not always efficient, uh, but that's going to give us hopefully at least one solution, right? So hopefully you can think of something right away. First of all, I, one, one thing I want you to notice is that x squared minus 9 is factorable. It's called difference of two squares. So we can factor it as x plus 3, x minus 3. And that kind of gives you a clue, hopefully, because we have x, x plus 3 here. So these two expressions have a common factor, sort of, if you ignore the bases. I mean the exponents. Okay, hopefully you get the idea. So how do we kind of organize this, right? When you have an equation like a to the power x equals b to the power x, how do you solve it, right? I mean, x equals 0 is a solution, right? As long as a and b are not 0, because you don't want to deal with 0 to the power 0, trust me. It's not good. So a, b different from 0. You can do that. What else can you do? Well, if a is equal to 1, x doesn't really matter, and b is equal to 1, right? Because 1 equals 1 all the time. <laughs> or if a is equal to negative 1, you want the exponent to be... Wait a minute, is this always going to work? Well, a equals b is another solution, isn't it? Okay, good. So if the bases are equal, since the exponents are already equal, then this should work. Anyways, you hopefully get the idea, but I'm going to put this equation in a nicer form. By the way, this is an idea that I got from another video that I made. I saw this in the comments, and I believe... This is a really good effective method. You see, I learned from you guys. So thank you. Let's see how we can deal with this. Okay, so we have x squared minus 9 to the power x equals x plus 3 to the power x. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by x plus 3 to the x. Like this. And that should give us, that should give us 1 on the right hand side as long as x does not equal negative 3. Now let's consider what happens when x is equal to negative 3, obviously, right? I mean, that's going to happen. So if you look at the original problem, let's go back to it. I'm going to erase this later on. And if you replace x with negative 3, you're going to get a 0 here and a 0 here. So yes, we can get a 0 at the bottom, I mean at the base, and then x can be something different, not 0, and this will work. Because 0 to the power negative 3 is 0 to the power negative 3. But this problem is eliminated when we divide. That's why we kind of need to consider this case first. x equals negative 3 is definitely a solution. Either now or you can look at it later. But for the time being, I'm going to assume x does not equal negative 3. Under those conditions, since these two expressions have the same exponent, I can kind of put them together like this make it a quotient, and then raise it to the power x. And that is equal to 1. Okay, this is awesome. Why? Because I got 1, which is nice. Let's go ahead and simplify this. This is going to give me x plus 3 times x minus 3 divided by x plus 3. Again, x does not equal negative 3 in this case, but we're going to look at other values. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel these out. And now I end up with the following, x minus 3 to the power x equals 1. So this is a really nice equation because I have a number on the right hand side which is much better than having variables on both sides. So how do we deal with these kinds of equations when you have a to the b equals 1? So there are three cases for real numbers of course. We can also talk about complex numbers but let's stick to reals for now. So we can talk about three cases. a is 1, b can be anything pretty much like a real number a is negative 1, and then b has to be even, an even integer, and then a is not 0, and b is 0. Because when b is 0, we have a to the power 0 equals 1, as long as 
we don't have 0 to the power of 0. Make sense? So we have three cases. We're going to look through all these cases. 1, 2, and 3. Let's go ahead and look at each case. A is equal to 1, and B is anything. We don't care about the exponent in this case. So x minus 3 equals 1. Now from here we get x equals 4. And don't worry, we're going to check all these answers at the end. Okay? That's the first case. Easy, right? Piece of cake. Second case, a is negative 1. x minus 3 is negative 1. This implies x is 2. Now, remember, x is the exponent, or b, and that must be even. Is 2 even? Yes. Yay. This is even, so we're happy. Okay, great. So that works. Third case, a does not 0. A does not 0. A does not equal 0, so x minus 3 does not equal 0. I start with, why did I write that first? Because I want to be consistent and always check the base first. Make sense? And obviously, x will be 0. And if x is not 3, x, x equals 0 and x does not equal 3 works together. So x equals 0 is also a valid solution. Another happy face. Three happy faces. Okay, how about that? So we got three solutions so far, and we also have a special case. Before we cancel things out, let's go ahead and take a look at the fourth case scenario, which actually comes from the original equation. What was the original one again? x squared minus 9 to the x equals x plus 3 to the x. And here, since we have x plus 3 as a common factor, we can go ahead and say, hey, you know what? x plus 3 equals 0 gives us x equals negative 3, and this should also be a valid solution. Let's go ahead and write our solutions as a solution set, and then we'll check them all. Okay? Makes sense? From smallest to largest, negative 3 happens to be the smallest, and then I have 0, I have 2 and 4. It's kind of nice because 2 and 4 are powers of 2. I don't know. I just think they're cool numbers. This is our set. Solutions. So, how do we check that? Let's go ahead and write the original problem one more time and plug in our answers. And we can do that mentally real quick. We don't have to like evaluate everything. Okay, I know if, it's, if you're taking a test, you have to show your work, but here you don't. Okay, if x is negative 3, we already checked that because that's how we got it, right? So we know that 0 to the power of negative 3 is equal to, we already checked that. So negative 3 checks. How about 0? If you replace x with 0, you get negative 9 to the 0 and 3 to the power 0. Very cool, aren't they? Absolutely. 0 also checks. How about 2? 2 squared minus 9. What is that equal to? Well, 4 minus 9 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared. And on the right-hand side, you get 5 squared. Do you see? Try to do this mentally. It's good exercise. And negative 5 squared is 25. And 5, two, 5 squared is 25. So they're also equal. How about the 4? 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 9 is 7. 7 to the power what was x again? 4. <laughs> okay, 7 to the 4th power is 7 to the 4th power. And uh, that checks too. Awesome. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.